Hey, love. Welcome to the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. You're here with your host, the one and only Melanie Hogan. Now, the Shy Love Radio Show is sponsored by Shy Love LLC. I hope everyone's week has been going well so far. Yesterday we had a pretty hot day. Today is a little more, um, a little more comfortable. So hopefully everyone is comfortable today. Now, before we begin, of course, we start with a deep breathing. We're going to take three deep breaths, inhale, hold for three, and exhale. We're going to do this three times. One. Two. Three, now let's talk about COVID. Currently in Illinois, we have 1,772 new known cases and 18 reported deaths. This is the eighth straight day in the row that we have seen more than a thousand new cases. It brings the state total to 176,896 and 7,478 deaths. Wow. Uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker said that we're at a danger point. So we're looking at COVID cases here in Chicago. And we're having a special guest here on the Shy Love Radio Show to join the conversation and let you all know who this spectacular uh, woman is. Uh, she definitely is someone that you all should know. But in the meantime, uh, Governor Pritzker is definitely saying that we are at a danger point here now. And he said that we could be headed for a reversal and reopening as the state continues to research in Corona case numbers. This is very unfortunate people. This is a very unfortunate situation. Angie. Hi. Welcome. Can you hear me? Did you hit your um, microphone icon? You see your microphone icon?
you should be able to hit that and then um I don't know if you can see me or not. I can see you. Okay. Um, no, it's something in front of your camera. Oh, um, let me see. This is new for me, so I'm trying to see. Uh, Looks like it's on vitamin. Hold on. Um, I got to figure out how to work this. Um. You, you were in front of the camera at first, but now I'm seeing something that says HMO, immune health. Okay, let's see, I think I'm doing, um, okay, um, hold on, let me figure this out. Okay. Um, okay. I'm, you all want you to help me welcome the beautiful Angie A. Love. Angie A. Love on the Shy Love Radio Show. <laughs> Fox Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. We welcome you today. I hope all is uh, going well with you. <laughs> so, so far, you can still hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, I'm trying to figure this camera thing out. I'm not sure how to work it. Okay, do you see the um, little video icon? There's like nothing popping up right now. Um, okay, I see where it says start video. Yes, hit that. Okay, hold on. Start video now, okay. but I don't know why is it faced that way instead of this way. Turn your camera around. That is weird. Um, hold on. Okay. It's like a button or something. That is weird. Yeah, is your uh, camera time to uh, facing out? Give me one second. I'm trying to see. Ah, uh, let's see. How do you do this? Um. I have no idea. I am, I'm trying. This is frustrating. Trying to see why is it? It's going blank now. Yeah, because it was there, and on my screen, I'm not seeing. Um... Okay, hold on one second. Let me see some. Okay, but why okay. is it trying that yeah. way? That is. Your camera back on. I hear you. I'm still looking at what looks like a. Uh, vitamin bottle but um we can continue the conversation uh while you're uh, getting the camera turned around getting your camera adjusted so right now we're we are talking about uh covid doing the covid update and these numbers are going up governor pritzer are, is saying that we are uh in a danger zone and it's looking like we're going to have to regress in the state's opening plan, the four phases that we've gotten up to because of the surge of numbers. Uh, so what do you think about this whole coronavirus or, ordeal pandemic that we've been having going on? I don't know what to think, to be honest. There's so many different stories, so many different lies. It's just like, you don't know what to believe. So it's like, then you hear it's a cure, then it's not a cure, then this works, and then this doesn't work. So it's like, it's, I think it's frustrating to us American people and just people in general, because we want answers. Right. It's just too much confusion that's going on with the virus. Yeah. You know, we were all told, oh, the heat kills it. Oh, but we're in 90 degree weather. And it's like, you know, nothing's happening. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I think it's just a lot of frustration going on, basically. A lot of things that may be just hidden from us. Yeah. You know, it's like, we want to know the truth. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think that that is a serious issue with the government and getting people to comply because we've been li lied to for so long. And it's like, it's so many different stories that's coming out. Um, 
but something is out here, whether it is the corona or some people say that it is from the uh, 5G towers that they're putting up and that's what's causing these symptoms. So, you know, it's something different depending on who you're talking to, but it's, it's something that's going on out here that is causing people to get sick and to the point of death. Um, but nevertheless, like whatever, you know, even cons conspiracy theorists were saying that um, they were trying to distract us with the COVID because so many of our um, governmental officials are like in court and being exposed to like pedophilia. pedophilia. Um, so they're saying that, so you have some people who are saying that, you know, uh, this is all like a little fluff story so that we don't pay attention to those who have been in league and what they've, what they've been doing with the children, which actually makes a lot of sense to me. Um, because if you notice, they kind of give people like a little slap on the wrist and stuff when it comes to uh, rape or molestation. It's like they don't take it as seriously as they would take a drug case, for example. Um, so I, I'm not sure what the real truth of the matter is, but it's definitely something out here that's getting everyone sick. Right. Um, so, and it's looking like we're going to, you know, regress and be back locked down in our homes like we were earlier this year. Um, Governor Pritzker actually said that he estimates another like six months of going through this before we can resume back to the norm that we used to know. Um, so, you know, it's been a very frustrating year so far and people have been expressing their frustration and, you know, letting out their anxiety and violence has been rising, especially here in Chicago. Um, so I hope that they have a better plan going into these last six months. I know they said that we're supposed to get another like stimulus check. Um, but it, it's just, all of this is just very, very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. So that means that it closes back down. People are going to, again, be out of work. You know, right. money issues that we have uh, coming up. I know some people have taken the initiative to actually become entrepreneurs during this time because, you know, the, the regular workforce is not really predictable at this time. So they've taken upon themselves to become entrepreneurs, which is a good thing, you know. So we're, we're seeing a lot um, going on here. And they're constantly adding other states to the list as far as uh, quarantine states. They said that there's an uptick between the age group of 18 and 29. And, um, you know, up to age like 25, that's like adolescence. So the brain kind of be off. And even just in your 20s, you know, there's some stuff you're kind of taking seriously and stuff, some stuff you're not. Like, what, what do you think will be an effective way to get the message out to the youth? to take this whole corona thing more seriously because they basically put it in their hands once they notice the uptick. And they said that if they continue to see cases and if these youngins uh, were there you go. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> you got it. Hey, yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Like, well, you know, I don't think that, I think the youth is lost, to be honest. I think the youth is so lost. It's, it's not many, like, programs out for the youth anyway. So it's like they don't take anything serious. Yeah. Because it's not, I mean, think about what the virus has done to a lot of people. It basically locked everybody in, basically. Yeah. Not just the youth, but just everybody, everybody. in general. So yeah. it's like now that everybody's out, everybody's so anxious to do stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's why so much ignorance going on. I mean, it was ignorance already, but it's just kind of triple because it's yeah. like, I mean, look at all the looting and all of that stuff that happened, basically. Yeah. It's like everything just basically tripled. Yeah. But I think personally, the youth is just so lost. It's not enough programs for the youth. And that's one thing I'm fighting for right now. Yeah. So, yeah. you yeah. know, it's like you can't blame everything on a youth when it's not really a lot of outlets for the youth. Right. A lot of kids come from 
fatherless homes, motherless yes. homes, yeah. you know, and it's like, they're lost. Yeah. I mean, where do they stand? Where's the help for them? Right. You and, know? and even um, those who do have a father at home or mother at home, um, I, I am a parent myself, so I'm definitely an advocate for parents, but at the same time, it's like, what type of, what type of parent are you? What type right. of parent are you? Because we have some fathers who are in the house who have taught their sons how to pull the trigger. We have some mothers in the house who are abusive to their daughters and uh, urge them to basically prostitute themselves this day and age. So it's really like the quality of the parent, you know, and a lot of times we are getting on the youth and we're talking about them so harshly. But all the time, and I say, you know, it's just have more outlets for them. Then you can blame the youth because it's like, yeah. then you can say, well, there's this, there's that, there's this, there's yeah. that. Because but I it's like, there's you, so many, I like, I conditioned you, so now you should know better. And it's like, but if the parents and the adults, it's like you can walk down the street, especially here in Chicago, and see some elders older than us outside with their fists up from the, <laughs> you know. Right. Out. So it's like, what type of. <laughs> What type of example is that uh, that we're setting for them? And then, of course... Yeah, I feel like, especially with the older older generation, I feel like it starts from them because you guys got to set the example. Right. Basically, for the youth, basically. Yeah. Set the example. It's just, like, it's just like somebody smoking a cigarette and they telling a the kid, oh, never do this. Yeah. But you're doing it right in front of me. It's making yeah. me curious. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, kids yeah. are curious. Teens yeah. are curious. So yeah. you can't do something violent around them or do something unnecessary around them and not think that, okay, they're going to have some type of suspicion or some idea. Yeah. Hmm, I want to try this. Me, you know, so we have yeah. to just be better examples. Yeah. I think so. Me, me as a parent, because, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of parents don't give their child their outlet or their voice to say, um, I feel that your actions were unfair or, um, cause you know, a lot of times parents already just Im immediately think that they know what is going on. They have all the details. So it's like the child doesn't even have a voice. And with my children from, you know, little grasshoppers, I let them know that they deserve respect and that their voice, their voice deserves to be heard. So, you know, everything starts in the house, in the home, right. but you do have parents who are trying their best with their children. And we have these outside, you know, social media peers, you know. That is true. Media. I can agree on that. <laughs> and, and, you know, and you, and, and it's, you know, it has some parents looking like, well, this isn't the child that I, that I was raising, you know. And it's right. because the Shirakians, even with the music and stuff, it's like they are telling them to rebel, you know, especially like with, with little boys and stuff, like they're telling them like not to listen to their mom or if they got a close relationship with their mom, like, you know, then they get teased for that and they weak and all this other type of little stuff. And it's like your parents are the ones that you're supposed to come to to help you out of situations right. that could have started off as an end heel, but you listen to your friends and now by the time your parents stand out, it's a whole mountain and the police come to pick somebody up. You know, so um, I, I really... I do a lot of views. I have my own children. I'm a mother to other people's children. Uh, right. I want to have like a little hugs house of love for like the little runaways and stuff because they really do need somebody to just listen to them. Uh, you know, teach them how to meditate, teach them how to self heal, teach them how to recondition themselves and really dwell into, you know. Yeah, because if you really get to kids. know some, some of the youth, some of the, especially the teenagers, yeah. you'll be surprised at half of what they're going through. Yes. They oh, want to yes. work. Yes. They want to do something. But they feel like there's no hope. Yeah, they really do. And it's, and it's very unfortunate because they're our, our future. So if they're feeling like this and, and things are the way that it is now, it's like, what are we going to see? <laughs> later on when they're the ones who live in. And it's like, it's kind of scary because, you know, a lot of them are saying that they're uh, savages and such, and they are definitely walking in the <laughs> <planet. laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they got to understand the power of the tongue and how they speak right. things into their lives. They got to understand that 
you know, back when you, we used to watch the Disney movies, we were already, we are already conditioned to kill the beast just through the Disney movies. So right. you have police who hear the children say and behave as savages. So now they're not looking at this as a child here who is behaving inappropriately. They are taking down the beast because they rather can get you and catch you in your neighborhood than find you in their neighborhood. So, you know, I, I just, it's, it's just a lot that's, that's going on out here. And I'm very optimistic. I, I just believe anything is possible. Now, does this onion have a lot of layers that we need to peel back in order to, you know, see some changes? Yes. But yeah, it's just so many different stories, though. It's just yeah. like you watch the news, all oh, this going on, all oh, that's going on, all oh, the numbers yeah. increase, all oh, the numbers yeah. drop. And it's yeah. like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, yeah. How, well, what are we supposed to take serious? Right, right. So much different stuff. It's like, goodness sake. Yeah, but it's you like see different videos, you know, over social media. It's like, ah. Oh. It's oh, this doctor found a cure. Oh, but yeah. this, this, this happens and this happens. It's like, oh, I'm just so tired. It's better to be safe than sorry. Definitely. Yeah. You I'm definitely want to be safe regardless. Yeah. Regardless yeah. of what you believe or don't believe, you got to be safe regardless. Yeah. That for sure. Because yeah. I've been seeing some cases where uh, they will put out the story that a particular person caught COVID and died. And then they will have like a note or show like their Facebook uh, post saying how this person did not take it seriously, did not believe that COVID existed until they found out the hard way, unfortunately. Right. So, like, you know, it's best to be safe than sorry. And then even with the youth, you know, you all are catching it now. They said that they weren't really susceptible to catching it too hard at first or whatever, but it's like now it came to them. And then they saying we have they have these asymptomatic, you know, symptoms. So they're feeling healthy, but they're getting you know, people our age or our elders, you know, sick. And it's like the lack of consideration for that part, for your own family, for your own family members, for your own parents. And it's like right. a lot of them still don't get it. It's like they're telling them, telling them like you could be responsible for potentially killing one of your family members because of how you moved it. You know, I know of a young lady who, two of her aunts that she, that helped to raise her because of her lack of consideration and not taking things seriously, they ended up dying, you know, and that caused a serious wedge between her and their family. Um, so I don't know. I, I had to take care of a little business uh, at this little police station over here on 78. It, it wasn't uh, police related, but um, I'm, I'm in there and I'm hearing a man, he is upset because of the youth on his block. And the police officer is just as lost as he is. That was, that was the crazy part. He was just as lost as the man on the other side of the counter. And he's like, well, can't you talk to their parents? He, Did you try talking to the kids? He's like, you can't talk to these kids these days. And a lot of them do become very disrespectful. A lot of the parents you can't even talk to because the parents are young. Right, yeah. And the, kid, the parents had the kids young. They just yeah. as ignorant. And you say to yourself, this is where they get it from. Right, right. And then when uh, the child gets shot, and you know, you got to bury this child, then you're saying that the rest of the world is, is the devil or evil. But when people was coming to you to let you know that your child was engaging in certain things, you know, you didn't do anything about it. I remember when my children were in grammar school, uh, my older children were in grammar school, uh, one of the security guards told me that he would hear parents drop their children off and say, if that be, you know, talking about a specific teacher, if that be or any of these MS will say something to you, you just let me know. So you're not even conditioning your child to listen to the teachers and to follow the guidelines of the teachers. Right. Now, I tell my children too, you know, there are rules when you go into different establishments. So it's like, okay, follow the rules, but if somebody is trying to have you engage in some stuff that don't seem right to you, then you have every right to say, well, I think my mama needs to be involved in what, you know, this, this conversation because it's not making me feel comfortable or whatever, whatever. But just to tell your child, uh, if the MF will say something to you, I'm going to come up there and woo out the bam. But you're not telling your child not to 
disrespect the teacher or disrespect exactly. other students, you know, and it's like this whole entitlement that you you so you so so bad and you so tough that anybody could get it. And what I don't understand about that is we all in Chicago. The the Chicago itself carries a certain spirit. So it's like whether or not you like walking in there in a day to day life, everybody gets that get you know what I'm saying, to get about it type of <laughs> trigger. Right. Of them. <laughs> so it's like, if you're not going to go, what make you think the next person going to accept this, you know? Right. So it's like, I, I just, um, I just, I just don't give up. And I, I just try my, the, the best that I can when it comes to, you know, trying to help out and just trying to be positive. I really hate to hear people say, well, there's nothing that could be done. This is going to be like this forever. And it's like, don't you understand that you're giving power to the negativity by saying that it's going to stay like this forever, by saying that... No, I just need to be more doors open for the youth, I think so. Just have more doors open. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Just have more outlets for the youth, just in general, you know? Yeah, especially like the art. It's always hope. It's always hope. Definitely. Yeah. I I definitely agree. And it's like, you know, as parents, uh, so do you have any school age children? I do. I, my my three-year-old, he's about to be four. Okay, okay. Well, what, what you think about this whole returning to school? He's this about to be four in actually two weeks. And, and, well, he's not going to school. Uh, oh. I'm going to have him homeschool. I'm not, okay. no. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the same yeah, he's going to be homeschooled. On. Yeah, that is the same thing I'm on, especially when I saw the uh, COVID waiver that the parents have to sign saying that if your child catches COVID and die, they ain't got nothing to do with it. Like, no. Yeah, that's, no. no. Uh, y'all got to get that under control it's before I send my... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want no parts. And then it's like the government is trying to put pressure on the school system by saying, well, if you want these funds, you better open up those doors. And it's like... Yeah. And then when we have, you know, people like Kanye saying they don't care about us, Michael Jackson saying they don't care about They've us. They've been saying this for like how long? <laughs> <laughs> See, we too young when we're young. We're just thinking it's just music, but we living in reality. Right. We're right. seeing reality. Right. right. And my God, when your eyes, when you start to wake up to what you were asleep on, I am surprised that more people have not lost their mind. We are a resilient people because when you open your eyes to see what really has been going on the whole time. Yeah. Wow. And then it's like, but you all want us to comply with you and cooperate and, you know, turn in the little Chiracians who killing people and, you know, just comply with the guidelines, but you're lying to us. You're showing us that you don't care. Um, you come down harder on a civilian for stepping out of line than you do a police officer who's trained and held to a higher, you know, and it's like, we need a lot of healing and reconditioning on every level <laughs> from the elite to the government to the residents. It's like, Lord. we all have some work to do. We all have some work to do. We point fingers back and forth, but we all on the individual level and collectively you know, we just need to heal. We need to heal from a lot of stuff. We need to recondition our minds to respond in different ways, you know? So, who girl. You know, there's a, there's a saying, you can't, you can't heal from something that's basically still breaking you. Mm. So basically, it's never been healed. Mm. We have never been healed. From slavery till now, we've never been healed. Yeah. So how can you heal from something yeah. that's basically still real? That was a great, that was, I like that quote though. That was, <laughs> that was good. That's I mean, just why. think about it. It makes sense if you really think about it and analyze it, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it does. And that's why I'm saying it's so it's so much work that needs to be done on all levels. You know what I'm saying? Like we got to get this, like with the whole racism, slavery thing. And then it's like the institutionalization of, you know, your mind. And it's like, okay, technically you can move around, but you're still enslaved to a certain, to a certain degree. Right. It's like, um, you know, even with that, I just feel like for the Constitution, because they were pointed out, and the police are very good at basically low-key letting you know that you're not a part of the Constitution, that these rights are not yours by how they treat you. Because when basically. you try to invoke a right, they don't, 
they don't care. But if you look at a video with somebody white being pulled over or being approached by a police officer and they're invoking their rights and they talking crazy as hell to the police officer, it's like the the way that they handle them is totally different from the way that they would handle one of us who could be saying the exact same right. thing. So it's like I think that from the Constitution need to be amended to where we are specifically inserted in there. Exactly. Because it's like they're giving us the idea that we are part of it, but it's like, no, nah, you're really not. You know, so it's like, yeah, we have a lot. And that, that I, I really like that. How can you heal from something that's still breaking you? And this has been generations and centuries and centuries, you know, over and over again. But there are some things that we can start to heal from, you know, even on the personal level with personal traumas that we've been through. Right. It's like, are you going to continue to allow this to have so much power over you that you cannot become your best self? Because ultimately, that's what it's doing. It's blocking you from really becoming your best self because it's the trial. Right. So, as, as you all see, this is a very intelligent uh, woman that we have here at the <laughs> <laughs> So, not, not only uh, is she uh, have, have brains, but you see for yourself that she's a beauty. And part of her career and goals and everything is involved in displaying her beauty. I want you to tell us uh, what it is that you do, what, what you've been involved in here in Chicago. Oh, my God. Where do I begin? <laughs> oh, Lord. I sing, of course. So I've been singing since I was like two years old. Oh. I mean, singing, modeling, eventually came down the line, uh, songwriter, poet. Oh, wow. oh, my God. The list goes on. Actress, done a lot of background for Empire. Okay. The Shy did background for that. Mm -hmm. I recently just did three magazines. Edith Magazine, uh, Tiara Magazine, and Model Icon, which will be coming out in the next week or so. Okay. I am proud. Yes. I am yes, proud. I've been doing my thing. I'm just yeah. glad everything's slowly re reopening because a lot of stuff got canceled. Like I had, I was booked for a play, a leading play here in Chicago. Okay. I was a leading actress singing basically, but that got canceled. So a lot of things that I had going did get canceled, but slowly picking back oh, up yeah, a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, which is good. Yeah. Which is good. And I, I'm very proud of you. And you know, we as women, I'm very strong on, you know, female empowerment and that girl power because yes. unfortunately so many um, females were taught to compete with another female to immediately, especially in the industry that we're in. If you yeah, they do that. They do that a lot. To, yes. And it's, it is ridiculous. Do you hear me? I am not a fan of it. I am not impressed by it either. You know, but awesome. you know where that come from? If you think about it, the award shows, the best videos, the the best hairstylers, the me best makeup artists, even the movie awards, the best kisser, the best. It's like it's everything's always a competition. Competition, yeah. Think about but, the award shows. Those are gonna. It's like it's gonna push people to be competition to want to be better because they thinking of the prize, they thinking of the award, they thinking of constantly being on top. Yeah, you and know, it's wrong with the desire to be on top. But do you have to literally? Take the head off the person next to you who's trying to get there too. Yeah. Do the music industry has that bad. Them down, start ugly rumors. You know what I'm saying? Sending bad energy. Uh, low key, just uh, behind the scenes, just manipulating what's going on with them. It's like, I don't, I am not a fan of that. And I, I understand right. the, the need for talk. But in my mind, we all shine in our own right. Exactly. So exactly. When we're coming together, that's a brighter refugion. So, you know, I don't look at it as, you know, I've never seen a female and I'm like, I'm going to outdo her. I'm going to do me. Yeah, that, that's ridiculous. You can't, you can't outdo <laughs> To me, it's like you're not comfortable with yourself. You. When you're yeah, comfortable right. with you, you be like, right. Right. you ain't thinking about the next right. person. If, any, if anything, I'm going to try to make sure, if, if I'm seeing you do your thing, I'm going to try to make sure you're here together, you're not looking crazy. Exactly. Hell, let's start and, together. And yes, Shoes. Because we, we all can win in the lane now here. You know, we didn't get to the point to where we didn't start to create our own lanes in certain levels. You know, right. it's like if you just open up to know that you don't have to tear the next person down in order for you to succeed. And even if it is something to where it's categorized, like you say with the award shows, 
you still don't have just do the best that you could do you exactly exactly just trying to tear down that next person and then be happy for each other because your time is coming just the fact that you even in that category you know your time is coming if you continue to work so um i just i just really believe that the our mental state you just really need to be conditioned on a, on a lot of things because if you look at everything it's all coming down to how somebody was treated right so things with george floyd how somebody was treated and it's causing these reactions that we're seeing spread out into the street we just need to be a little more considerate of each other um more assured of ourselves and what we our capabilities uh, you know, just willing to willing to help each other out. You said the key word being sure of ourselves. That's yeah. the key word right yeah. there. Yeah, that's why I am a strong advocate for know thyself. And it's like, okay, you might have things going on, certain stuff you don't like, certain stuff that, that needs to be improved, but those are circumstances and they can be changed, you know? Right. But the, the core of your character and your heart, that's what's going to give you longevity in any game. Because people want to start to notice you know how you moving uh so i'm just not a real big fan of women tearing other women down or you know being on that snake type stuff or whatever so i am very proud of you here at the shallow radio show thank we you are <laughs> all for women empowerment and definitely you know as, as much as possible because it's like your your light not taken away from my light and my light not taken away from yours exactly you know and it's like if we could just think like that overall as a people you know oh my god it ain't nothing that we'll be unstoppable we will really be unstoppable uh but do you have um any okay so i heard you also say that uh you know you like like work with the youth that's something else that you're trying to work on yeah, All Stars Pro, uh, All Stars Project Chicago. I've been with them since oh my god, oh whew, since two thousand seven. Actually, I was a young teenager at the time, but I started out um, as a performer, singing basically. Okay, and from there, I started volunteering basically okay. with the talent shows. They have the development school for you. Okay. right now going on that's been going on since okay you know so they have a lot of different programs i've has been a quite a lot of awards from them too for helping out with the community helping out with awesome. the youth awesome. all of that stuff so I yeah i just shared it on my page too they okay. always show me love because i you know i love being a part of the community that's like a big yeah. thing for me yeah because i feel yeah. like we have to stand together yes we do especially not just for the youth but just in general the in violence is going yeah. on the youth just yeah you know yeah. all of that because it, it's like and uh you know a lot of people feel like oh i can't do anything about it and it's like yes you can your voice that one something. voice you could do something if all of our voices trust me we're going to be heard you know seriously <laughs> seriously and it's like if you don't believe that look at what has happened so far in 2020 exactly i just stepped up because of what's been going on so, you know, definitely if we come together and we stand doing it and be consistent with it and just keep going and, you know, strategizing and organizing, you know, we could definitely get a lot done. We could definitely get a lot done, but I'm very proud of you. And, you know, they say so much negative things about people in Chicago. I hate to read the little uh, comments on social media about outside people coming, you know, they, they can't wait to tell, tell us up here in Chicago at any little thing that they, they advertise don't. mainly the bad but they don't they don't advertise a lot of the good some yes. of the good but rarely yeah. the good and we need, they need to advertise the good because chicago is a beautiful city it's so yes, much to do yeah but they yeah. advertise the bad this yeah. person got shot this person got robbed. okay you want people to know because you want them yeah. to be aware yeah. of their yeah. surroundings yeah. and neighborhoods so yes there's nothing wrong with that but what about the good? Like right now, all these food giveaways. That, you see that right. on the news? Right. You don't see that on the news. Right. A lot of giveaways right now. Yeah. And yeah. I've shared quite a few flyers letting people know families in need. You yeah. know, go. If you don't need nothing, let somebody that you know. No, share yeah. that on the news. Share yeah. that around. And that's share you know the what? good. That's, the communities are doing certain things. Here. That's part of why Shai Love is here to help to expose that because that's the same thing that I was noticing. And it's like, I love, I love Chicago. This is my home. Um, I still believe in it regardless of what's happening. I'm willing to put my energy and time and resources into improving it however I can or whatever. Right. And yes, we do need to, you know, and, and to use my platform to help to get out like stuff that you're doing, stuff that other people are doing that the media 
you know, is not covering, you know, and so, um, but we have some, we have some great things, like uh, for this weekend, for example, we have a Stop the Violence Community Fellowship Day by the City Motivators. Free food and drink, love and laughter, right here in Chicago. So traditional scene and mass will be encouraged. It is 731.20 from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, at the Woodhull Park on 73rd and East End. So we have stuff like that. And I know uh, the, the owner who put this together, her name is Felicia, she used to own City, City Dollar. We had helped her out previously. She was a black owned business and then she ended up transitioning. And now she's coming more, you know, she was um, doing community work through her store, but now she's really like started to get in it anymore. So she contacted me and let me know about the Stop the Violence Fellowship Day. Okay. And it's like, you know, we need more, more things like that. You know, she's advocating the safety and stuff for everybody. And she's telling me love and laughter. That's, we need more of that versus this whole Chiracian, behavior and you can't you're not even hitting your targets you're hitting innocent people and kids like that's ridiculous to me i don't respect the technique uh but i like to whatever you put your energy on it's going to start to amplify that amplify that mm -hmm. so the more we start to put our energy on the love on the laughter on the fellowship on the healing is going to continue to amplify the same way we put our energy on this violence and we've seen that amplify so it's like you got to understand, you know, the how energy works because it's all energy. Uh, but I, I definitely believe in us here in Chicago. Um, if there's nothing that we can't do with Chicago. And, you know, some people talk about our, you know, they like, well, y'all, y'all think y'all, y'all think y'all the shit. And it's like, yeah, we're Chicago. I don't know what to say. <laughs> We're Chicago, so it's like it's nothing that we can't do in my in my mind. Exactly. You know, um, so you know everybody watches to see how we respond to certain things. You know, we're very influential here, so it's like if we can we we can get things together. We can definitely get things together. We have me doing my thing, you doing your stuff. Uh, Felicia, she's doing her stuff. It's a lot of people, a lot more people here in Chicago who are out here with their boots on the ground. Yeah you know, on a daily basis, trying to uh, make a difference. And if everybody could just start to join in, even if you out, uh, we're going to have like a clean block project over here where I say we do it uh, annually. Uh, even if you coming out and you happen just to clean up the area where you are or have more surveillance in the area where you are or talk to the kids in the area where you are, it's something that you can do. Even if you're a parent and you don't want to be out there in the streets, but you have children. The least you could do is make sure your child is not engaging in any Chiracian behaviors, you know? Exactly, exactly. Um, and I think that the government needs to uh, allow parents to be parents once again because they have really pigeon pigeonholed a lot, put a lot of parents in like a little tight bond uh, as far as how they can uh, raise their children or discipline their children. And um, the children know you know what I'm saying? If they got somebody on the outside where if you say something wrong to me or whatever, whatever, I'm going to call these people. But it's like, no, you need to allow the parents to be a parent because when you talk exactly. to them and say, well, what's the problem? They say, well, a parent's not being a parent. Okay, but then... You didn't allow them to be a parent. In jail. Right. So it's like... Uh, we so it's like the police is trying to discipline, basically, because the parents can't. And, and yeah. And, and, and how are they disciplining our children? They're killing them. Exactly. Exactly. I could have took a few smacks on the butt and got an understanding. You put a bullet in their chest. How was that better? <laughs> How was that better? Right. How was that more acceptable? Just because you're trained and you have this badge to do so, like that's that's ridiculous. Uh, so yeah, they have bound us in a lot of ways, and then it's like we're being punished for not being able to find a productive way of dealing with it or something. Uh, but they, they need to redo like a lot of policies. They need to amend a lot of things and make it current in accordance to what we have going on now. We still walking back some rules that was, you know, from way back when. It does not apply to what's going on now. Right, yeah. But hopefully, I don't know, maybe I started to go to uh, some of these little alderman meetings and uh, start to get in and because I have a lot to 
say about this stuff, the more and more that I learn and observe and experience, you know, it's, it's a lot that needs to be done, but I, I truly believe that we can do it. But I have had a wonderful time with you today. Yes. And I want you to let the public know where they can find you, where they can follow you. Facebook, Angie A. Love, A-N-G-I-E, space A-L-O-V-E. Um, Instagram, A dot love, underscore number one diva. Okay. And Twitter is the real A Love. Okay. So those are all my social media accounts. I'm not hard to find. <laughs> okay. Look, look her up. Follow her. She has some great things going. Yes. She has resources for you. Uh, maybe we can hear her sing one of these days. That'll be wonderful. Yes. Um, you are always welcome to come back here on the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. I want you all to know that we love you here at Shy Love. Nobody believes in you. We do. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, you all enjoy your day. Uh, thankfully, we having some comfortable weather this week. So, you know, it's yes. so hot and humid because <laughs> I've been tired of that part, girl. <laughs> yes. But uh, thank you for joining us. I hope you had a wonderful time. I you did. Also follow Miss Angie A. Love on the Shy Love Show. And we will be seeing you all soon. Definitely, you will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. Bye. <laughs>